Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in 2005, three former PayPal employees, they became frustrated by how difficult it was to share videos online. Okay. So one of the employees named uh, Karim, Javed Karim. So he once wanted to see the video on India, Indian Ocean Tsunami, right? But he was not able to find it. So that's where three of them uh, thought that there is a massive problem out there. Like people are not able to share videos, share memories, share valuable insights and all those things so keeping the thing in mind they just out of fun started one application and a video sharing application and they launched youtube on february 14 2005 as soon as they launched they uh, they uploaded their first ever video featuring javed karim on april 2005 so and the video was titled uh, me at the zoo you can go and find it you'll find that video quite old okay behind this story when they started youtube they started with a very simple architecture. They had a simple MySQL database to store metadata about a video. Metadata is in the user who has uploaded it, the title, the description. That Those are the metadata. And they simply used a uh, file-based, disk-based storage system to store the video files. They directly stored the files on the Linux file storage and uh, stored the metadata in MySQL server. But they did not uh, obviously visualize the massive scale it will get in near future. So as, as new users joined in the platform, right, the load on their my single MySQL server increased. So in order to handle that, what did what they did? First simple came came up with this master replica architecture. Okay, where there will be a master node or the leader node, and there will be let's say two replica nodes or the read node. So master nodes obviously deals with the uh, write queries. And obviously read queries also but the read replicas only and mainly deal with the read queries so with this simple master replica uh, architecture although they were able to handle the load for a period of time as the user load again increased in their application in the YouTube the replica node failed to keep it off with the master node right because the uh, new videos were being uploaded so the right queries were used in the master node so so the follower node or the replica node could not keep up with this uh, massive writing operation on the master node so in order to handle that what they did they made it asynchronous and instead of keeping everything you know directly coupled with each other they what they did they came up with a binary log based approach okay so so binary log is nothing but it's a kind of a cache you can think okay it stores all the event logs okay or all the events from the my master node what does binary log means binary log is a kind of a you know logs of all the write operations that have been done all the queries that have been performed which can change the state of the database okay it's not the read queries it's mostly about the write queries so it will store all the logs let's say uh, i edited a row in the master table or i added a row in the master table or i deleted a row in the master table those will be logged in the binary log now what is the benefit of adding a binary log um, as per the convenience of the replica node or the fuller node they can actually read it from the binary log okay uh, and they can actually decide ki what what changes have been done in the master node and they will just replicate that changes in the in, in their own node and they will become you know consistent with the master node so that's what the job of the binary load right so although it you know temporarily solved their scalability issue they face some new problems right now okay with this architecture now what are the problems because uh, with this single cluster of uh, mysql with a, just a master and two replica node or three replica node it was not enough for them to handle the load as the loads kept on increasing I had to go for database setting right if you don't know about database setting let me just give you a brief what is database setting you just you know keep different portion of your data in different uh, uh, different databases okay let's say you store let's say 100 users data in database one 100 users next 100 users database uh, data in database two this is just a rough, rough example i'm giving you but you know keeping the databases or doing the database adding is not also easy because it comes with the cost the transactions the joins become obviously complex because you have to join multiple tables in case joins are required too and the next problem is obviously the query routing right so your application must know which SAD contains my user, right? Let's say you are querying about 150 users, which, which resides in the second SAD. That means your application logic will now become complex. It needs to handle, do some extra extra processing before running the actual query, which can might actually slow down your application, right? So the next problem that they faced is about the performance. Because there was a, you know, lag between the, between being consistent with the master node because we are, uh, because replica node are, you know, maintaining the state same as the master node using the binary log so there is a delay definitely right as soon as something is written to master node it is not immediately reflecting in the replica node 
so it 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 makes the replica node a bit of laggy right that means there is a possibility that it will serve stale data to the users okay or outdated data to the users so in case the application uh, needs fresh data or let's say the latest updated video they want right or what the videos that are that, that are updated today they want to see in that case uh, the application logic should handle the uh, such, such queries to the master node so these are the three problems that they faced so what they wanted they wanted to add some components instead of directly interacting with the database like this they wanted to have some layer of abstraction on top of this architecture that's where they came up with a sidecar service called whites okay so what does whites do so whites uh, whites is you know tool that was developed by uh, youtube back then so it is actually open source project you can go there it's compatible with mysql it's compatible with Mari maria db also by default mysql does not support uh, siding whites makes it, makes it enable to make a cluster of mysql servers act as a sided database server and it's scalable reliable and it's an open source tool so you, you should definitely check it out okay so what they did they developed this white tool and the main component of the white tool are this vt tablet that you see right so what is vt tablet so this vt tablet is nothing but it's a sidecar service okay that is running coupled with each of the database node in the cluster now now what does this vt tablet does using this vt tablet what they can do they can obviously manage the backup of the server right i mean now this vt tablets this is also a vt tablet all of the things that you see these three are the vt tablets this vt tablets what what they do they have basically three jobs to do the main job was to you know take consistent back continuous backup of the server so now the backing backing up of the nodes can be handled easily by the vt tablet the second job was to rewrite expensive queries by adding let's say some limit clause let's say someone comes up with select style someone fights a request which asks for all the videos that are available in the database so obviously your database would not want to you know cater to such queries because it's not efficient for a database to send all the records so what does sidecar service vt tablet can do it will rewrite the query it can add a limit clause to the existing query it can detect if any such queries comes i'll just add a limit clause limit 100 or limit 50. the next main job of the vt tablet is to cache frequently access data right as soon as let's say someone is uh, continuously asking about the india pakistan world cup video right so instead of querying the data from the database it can actually cache it in itself and then serve the user request so these are the three, three main job that uh, vt tablet uh, performed in the uh, architecture now comes the interesting part so this all this we discussed about is a single master node right we have a single master node and multiple read replicas single master node cannot store let's say billions of record it can store let's say it's stored even let's say billion of record it cannot it has a limitation right it cannot you can you cannot just store all the database all the data in a single node or single server so definitely you need to think about siding now we are coming to the first problem that we discussed if you need to do siding there will be multiple copies of this cluster like this if i just scroll down let's say this is a single unit okay single chart okay this is a single chart i have just uh, taken this two times here let's have two sides here okay and you can see the entry point is the vt tablet for this cluster now if you have multiple sites like this you are implementing database siding you are storing different portion of data in different sites in a side clusters like this how do you route the queries okay i mean an application has to have a single point of contact right so they design another component in the whites and named it as vt gate now what does vt gate do it acts as a stateless proxy server uh, which routes the queries from the application to the appropriate side that means if queries query request let's uh, select a name from a users where user is equal to let's say 105 just a rough example i'm giving so vt5 knows that that 105th users lies in the second side i should route the query to this side instead of this how does vt get knows that because vt get proxy server is attached with a key value store and this was built using zookeeper they use zookeeper as their key value store so this key value store has all the information about the siding all the schema that is involved in the tables and which side contains uh, what data all this information is stored in this key value pair okay now using those information vt get now det determines and understands which side contains the data that the user is requesting it analyzes the query then sends the query routes the query to the vt tablet of that particular side now using this uh, vt get they were able to find the correct vt tablet obviously as you discussed they were able to keep the number of mss uh, mysql connections quite low using mechanism of connection pooling it can obviously uh, limit the number of queries that that will be transferred to the actual database server so it uh, protects your database server from overloading obviously it can uh, limit the number of transactions that are uh, triggered the app 
and it makes center architecture looks like a single monolithic mysql cluster so using this simple yet effective architecture they were able to support two po almost 2.5 billion users at a one point of time obviously as they grew as the number of users increased in their application it was acquired by google okay then they moved to google stack they used google file storage instead of linux file storage to uh, store the data they moved to a microservice based architecture all the stuffs are there but with the simple architecture they made a mysql server okay which does not support sharding still by default they were able to create a sided cluster of mysql server just by using some sidecar containers and sidecar services okay today's date bytes is a open source project that is widely used by a lot of clients in production which makes a mysql based server scalable reliable and sad compatible right sharding compatible and obviously high level you can see the features here they have defined all the features here right so if you want to make your mysql or mariadb based or database cluster a scalable and highly available cluster with sharding enabled so you can definitely give this bytes will a try okay it will definitely help you so what did we learn from this video see this video tells us like how you face problem and engineer that problem you think about that problem how to come up with steps one by one the main reason why i created this video is to make you aware how to approach a problem okay a problem cannot be solved 100% in a, in a 100% efficient manner in in day 1 or day 30 it takes time okay you build something you face some issue you think something better then you implement that's how we should approach a given engineering problem so well if you like this video i would request you to subscribe to my channel keep supporting I create this kind of deep tech based videos, system design based videos with use cases where I, I get to learn something I feel like I should share. I create this kind of video to help you guys learn something new every day and be a better software engineer than yesterday. Okay. If you like this video, let's target for 50 likes for this video. Share it with your friends who wants to learn something new. Be curious. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.